Hey everybody, this is a little demo video that we would have done in class if we were in uh, in uh, green, but being in yellow, we had to kind of uh, make some stuff work. And I didn't want to go without having this conversation. So uh, we're going to do two different types of collisions here with these carts that I've got. They've got uh, some low friction wheels, so hopefully that helps us so that we're not dealing with uh, too much loss of energy um, as they roll across the track. You may or may not be able to hear them making a little bit of noise, so there's definitely some losses of energy. But I wanted to show you um, some elastic collisions, but then also show you some inelastic collisions. I know you can't see everything off to the side, but it's, it's most of the screen. Most of what you can see should work. Um, so the first thing you need to understand about these two carts is that they have magnets in them that cause them to repel each other. Okay, And so these two carts don't stick together. They don't, you know, it, it's essentially what we call an elastic collision. An elastic collision is a collision where the two objects bounce off each other and there are no losses to kinetic energy. Um, so the first thing we want to acknowledge or deal with here is kind of identifying or understanding what happens when two carts that have the same mass uh, make a collision. Okay, so with two things that have the same mass, what's going to happen to uh, the velocity of the two objects? So first I'm going to have this car here um, in the center not moving. I'm going to send the other cart at it at a certain velocity. It doesn't really matter which velocity, but it's going to come at it with a positive velocity. We'll say that to my right is positive. Maybe that's backwards in your picture. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it's flipped or not. But as that comes in, it makes that collision. We want to know what's going to happen to this cart on the right, what's going to happen to this cart here on the left. So if we think about that, you know, cart's coming in. I think most of you would say that you're expecting this cart here to go to the right. But what will happen to this cart on the left? Will it, as that collision happens, bounce backwards? Will it stop? Will it follow the cart um, that it sends off to the right? Okay, and so we're going to do this best I can. Forgive me if it's imperfect, uh, but we're going to do the best we can with it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, so there's a little bit of carryover, a little bit of a uh, bump as it gets that push, but if I go the right speed, that's a really good example. We can see that the cart that had the velocity actually import, imparts all of its momentum to the second cart, and that first cart, because it gave all of its momentum away, uh, stops moving. So objects that have the same mass that undergo an elastic collision actually just trade speeds. And so if I have these two coming at each other, okay, both coming with a velocity, they will leave with the other guy's velocity. And so you can imagine this cart here, we'll call this cart A, is coming in here, cart B's coming in here, they leave with what the other cart had as a velocity to begin with. Kind of a cool deal. Now, that isn't true when the mass of one or more of the objects is different. So let's get see if I can get this on here right. Come on, Mr. Welch. You know, sometimes, there we go. It helps if you actually put some effort into doing it right the first time. All right, so we've got our cart here. Now we've got a massive cart. This guy's got a little block on it. Don't know how well you can see it against my gray shirt. This block right here gives us a little bit extra mass. Um, and so now we can try the same collision here. Try to get that to hold still. As the cart that's heavier comes in, not only does it push the other cart forward, but it also has enough momentum left to continue carrying on. Conversely, if I send my light cart at the heavy cart, it bounces backwards. It has so, it imparts so much momentum that it actually has to gain some negative momentum to go backwards. Very, very cool interactions as they interact with each other. As they're both going, obviously, big guy's going to win, but by how much? And then what exactly is happening? That's where those two sets of formulas uh, really pay off for us. So that is our elastic collisions where objects bounce off each other. Well, if you're a thinker like me, the next question would be, what happens in an inelastic collision, which is in seven, the second half of chapter seven, we talk about these collisions where the two objects actually stick. So here the magnets are set up to be attractive and um, there's some Velcro to kind of hold them together. Now I, I gotta let you know up front, the magnetic field, okay, it's created, it's going to create a magnetic force. So these will accelerate towards each other, which makes this an imperfect model. I'm totally aware of that. Okay, however, it's a good um, 
qualitative, not quantitative, but qualitative way to model what happens to the, the velocity or the momentum of the objects during collision. And we're sending our, our car over here on the other side, come crashing into it as they stick together. Watch what happens to the momentum of, or the velocity of the, the two objects together. So here we go. Hopefully you can tell that there was a difference in the velocity, that it simply slowed down. Okay, so let's kind of pay attention to how much it slows down. If the masses are equal, that slowdown should be approximately half the velocity. That is, momentum gets split equally between the two, and we end up with a fairly slow uh, velocity. This time, we're going to have a little guy run into a big guy who's standing still. And hopefully, you're able to kind of be aware of the fact that that slowed down even more because the little guy only has so much momentum. And when it hits the big guy, sharing that amongst the two masses uh, is a lot to share. Last combo would be big guy coming at little guy. Okay. Watch to see how much it drastically affects the, the velocity. Fact is, it doesn't change the velocity much because you're adding such a small amount of mass. So inelastic collisions, they stick together. Elastic, like a bouncy ball, they bounce off of each other. And so there's some different applications, uh, some problems that uh, hopefully make sense to you and, and give you a sense of what's happening uh, when you're looking at these as problems.